What are we doing? Let's answer this with the biggest form of we. What are we humans doing? What is happening on planet Earth? Lots is happening on planet Earth, as is within the human community. There's one particular special chore in the process of being done. This may approach you with a surprise punch that instigates you to instantly argue with whatever you can think of as if you need to defend yourself from the information I'm sharing with you. Information that I've retrieved from pure observation, from looking at myself, others, and the rest of the planet for years now. This is a recent discovery of mine. So what is this special chore that we are performing? First, I want you to think of God and or gods, or whatever you can assume is too strong for you to consider the same level overall as you. We're not talking about God, gods, or higher powers, but what would they be doing with us if they needed us for something? Taking a look at a million fictional worlds similar to ours, then looking out into the day, you'll find there's one small world. A more evolved being is as evolved as you plus more. That means what it means. People blend in with each other as does other life at some point because we're all on one planet. Now we are globally connected. What can God not do as good as us? Labor. What would God, or for you atheists, a superior intellectual man who wipes the table with you, need done with labor and why? Oil. Throughout human history and before what's recorded, mankind has built, lived, and gone to war. After a war, there are mass graves. Thousands of bodies that are stacked on top of each other and buried. We bury the bodies until the stink goes away. Solid, pungent stench is not survivable and it can affect for miles. When you bury thousands of bodies, you bury it further than six feet. Let's say kings of men dug holes before or in case of war. You're assuming that they decay and turn to bones. No, hard human flesh stuck together in a massive pile, then buried, would not only decay but form a hole in the center. Rainwater seeps down into preserved decay. This becomes oil, black thick goo that is not necessarily a good thing. Besides these ancient burial chambers, there are reservoirs that can be filled with the dead and form an oil well. Pause on oil and add gas and coal. I'm not educated enough to observe what gas is, but coal is definitely ash and char from decades of human living in the same area collecting and using it for hygienic and crop purposes, or an entire forest burnt down for whatever reasons, most likely war. Oil, gas, and magma can collide. Explosive. A new source for earthquakes? Back to oil and underground caverns. Without oil in these caverns, they can be closed in or cleaned out and filled with water. Water wells and reservoirs are beneficial for the above ecosystem. If you think God can just drink oil and turn it to gold or food for his chickens, I'm not arguing. But at this point we call now, it's safe to say we are under and born into a planetary compromise. For those who think using God or gods is gibberish, you don't need to include God as man is included. That's what we call history. Clean up our history, for the dreamers have taken charge. Worldwide, we drill for oil from 3,500 feet to 40,000 feet below the surface. Everyone drives a vehicle. This way, slowly and surely, all the oil will be burned away to welcome a new dawn of golden opportunity. As you can see in movies, sports, books, business, etc., humans intuitively sense an excitement excited by many things if not one. That's an individual spark. It may not happen in the brain, but children and adults are excited spontaneously over and over again because they sense this golden opportunity of a new dawn. The new dawn allowing biology to flourish without worry of the dangers of giant oil-filled caverns. 
These massive hazmat zones are not only explosive, but the presence alone is always a tick in the mind of Gaia or God, who knows it will not allow evolutionary steps. As we are completing this chore for God, we should know we are cleaning the planet for ourselves, plants and animals too. Who doesn't want to live? So if you didn't realize, see or notice even just a little bit that the planet is at a transitional period of time, that's another fact for you to spectate. Just look at oil. It is pure filth. Oil does no good if it happened to start spewing onto the surface. We are purifying our planet one step at a time. Oil drilling affects all of us because the planet's covered in fire combusting engines that require fuel. Now you know why we aren't advancing our technology just yet. We're at a pace to rid a burden for good. Does this mean God owes us one? Yes, God owes us one and one only. Don't expect Jesus or cash to fall from the sky. Being owed one insists you to file a claim for what you are owed. This isn't an individual thing. Within a global community, God owes us one. That means the world has a request, a freebie. As you can see, most jump the gun, assuming the world's a free-for-all, lust and pleasure game. That's that intuitive spark of excitement. Hey, then you learn it eventually and find out we only need to work. Then you suffer having to watch others please their lust. See, we trade in what we're owed for a get out of jail free card. God provides for us enough to finish the labor in due time with an extra tip. The extra tip is here until we are no longer a need. Bet against this. Because we are owed one, we can do something we wouldn't be allowed to otherwise if we weren't supported by reason. Why not something good? Why not join God in heaven on earth? Why don't we all wake up the way we all want and need to and find to an exact possibility what do we all want for ourselves? As long as you do your chores, you can go out and play. While we all know playing isn't sane, we could find that doing chores that are required to live are as necessary as breathing and eating. You are stronger from it. As we are laboring, we can use our playtime to evolve or be ashamed. Why ashamed? Because God also has faith and chose to do the world this way to give us a full experience that leads to this opportunity for you to evolve. I have spent my time experiencing our situation and find it only shows you how to evolve yourself. And as long as you are alive, you can evolve too. Gnosis and self-fertilization is proof. Any life form can reverse the dying process and become immortal. People are in our way, but I know there isn't a human that doesn't want to become immortal, even if they say they don't, because that is absolutely insane. All we need is to decide together to buy with what we're owed our places in the new dawn of golden opportunity, where you grow into your own unique individual supernatural entity known by everyone. As it begins, all the truth of how shows itself to you. Another truth before the truth.